This is the remarkable story of a girl born with teeth down there. We start things off many years ago where we meet the O'Keefe family. Their home sits just behind a pair of nuclear power plants. We got Daddy Bill, his wife Kim, and a pair of step siblings. The little boy, Brad, gets a case of curiosity and lets his hand wander. Ah! Huh, she bit him. We cut to many years later where we meet Dawn, the little girl all grown up. She gives a speech at a wholesome Christian conference on purity. You all have a gift, and you don't just give gifts to everybody. That's called a handout. Would you really give your gift away to a girl that looks like she just stepped out of a music video? Yes. Yes, indeed I would. While delivering her speech, Don locks eyes with, wait, is that Joe Jonas? Never mind. It's Toby, one of God's bravest warriors. After the speech, Don chats with their friends about how cool abstinence is. Then, Toby pulls up, and they lock eyes once more. Stay strong, Toby. Stay strong. Back at home, Don's parents commend her resolve while a grown-up Brad blasts heavy metal in the other room. Ugh, I hate this. Before going to bed, she brushes her teeth, but someone's in the shower watching her. <laughs> oh, just typical step-sibling stuff, I guess. Sometime later, we see Don at school where she's teased by some students. <laughs> she carries on before a boy named Ryan tries to chat her up. Unfortunately, his buddy Beep. blocks him. Fun fact, this actor's name is Ashley. I thought you'd want to know that. Moving on, during class, Don learns about the reproductive system. We learn that while the male hardware is on full display, the female one is kept under a sticker. One student complains, but why? What's the difference between them? You'll probably never know. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> got him. Don offers up her own take. It's because women's areas are sacred. Everyone laughs, except for Toby, who speaks up in defense. After class, Don and the gang head to the movie theaters. Hmm, that's R-rated, but we could watch one of the PG-13 movies. No. Even those have heavy makeout scenes. Well, we can't have that. The group proceeds into a kid's movie and enjoys each other's company. Toby eyes them up before turning his gaze to Don and awkwardly staring. Hey. Though, he fights the devil's temptation and remains a pure soldier of God. Then, we cut to Brad who's chilling with his girl Melanie. He inspects his finger, the same one that was bit as a child. What happened to it? I think she bit it. Later, the group of blessed buddies meet up again and visit a little nature spot. Ooh, look at that cave. Yeah, that's where people go to play hide the pickle. Then, Don and Toby get some alone time together and discuss their purity. I only touched myself once, like a year ago, but I've stayed strong since. Wow, you must be like a moderator of the NoFap subreddit. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. I am. Meanwhile, um, pu puppy play. Anyway, Don heads home and ends up having some thoughts about Toby. You know, like marriage. Though, the adventure is cut short by her guilty conscience. The next day at school, Don pulls up to class and doesn't pay Toby much mind. Later in the locker room, she calls him and shares her concerns. I don't think we can hang out anymore. It's not pure. Oh, yeah, I, I was thinking the same, I guess. At home, Don overhears Brad arguing with his girlfriend Melanie. She pays him a visit and attempts to comfort him, but he makes some sussy statements. I'm your sister. Step. Naturally, Don is overwhelmed and runs off. In her moment of weakness, she hits up Toby and invites him to the spa from earlier. He brushes over at nearly the speed of sound in hopes of getting lucky. I brought my swimming suit. Let's go. The pair undress, and Don remarks that that's exactly what she imagined he'd look like. M me too. I mean, I've been imagining you too, just with less. They hop in, swim towards a rope, then share a kiss. This doesn't feel wrong at all. Toby realizes that abstinence is a scam. Though, Don tells him to cool his brakes. Then, they goof around this rope a little more before Don swims towards the forbidden cave. She climbs up on the rocks and takes a rest on what is probably a hobo's bed. Toby follows, but Don commands him to stay put. But I'm freezing. He joins her. He's fine, he's fine. Look, just a, a part of him goes missing, you know, metaphorically. Don sits in shock for a while, then bikes home. She has a purifying shower and afterwards lays in bed. She thinks about what could have been her husband as his screams repeat in her mind. In the morning, and in a fit of rage, Don tears away the marriage posters that adorn her wall. Afterwards, her friends drive her to another purity conference. Toby's gonna be there. Wait, you heard from Toby? Yeah, a few days ago. Oh. The conference starts, and Don isn't her usual self. Today, I'm gonna talk about... Purity, yes! Yes, I just said that. What proceeds is some kind of weird fever dream. Don rambles on as the kids chant strange phrases. Eventually, she's escorted off the stage. Afterwards, Don pulls up to the after party. Copy bar a moment. Okay. Damn, these kids are getting down. Also, check out this music. Oh, this shit is bussin'. Anyway, Ryan slides in for a chat, then gives her a ride home. In the car, he offers to take her on a date. Don is taken aback. Don't you know I'm out of your league? Okay, she didn't actually say that. Anyway, he hands her a business card. But she's not Patrick Bateman, so she kind of doesn't care about business cards. 
Unfortunately for Ryan, she laughs it off and walks home. While he drives off, Ryan's incel rage kicks in and he decides he wants the last laugh. He drives back and angrily marches towards her door, but is greeted by a territorial Brad. Yeah, get out of here, Ashley. Then, we cut to Don back at the spot where Toby went missing. His car is still there. She swims over to the cave and... Wow, is that Mr. Krabs and a hot dog? Considering God probably doesn't like murderers, Don goes ahead and tosses her purity ring. Back at home, she carefully removes the sticker from the textbook, finally revealing the holy place that lies beneath. Hmm, okay, this looks just like mine. Seeking more answers, Don starts googling away about mutations. She finds an article about something called Please. Gina Dentata. Okay, this is getting weird. I think it's time a professional had a look. Don departs to a gynecologist and it's her first time. She's rather nervous, but the doctor assures her that everything will be fine. He directs her to plant her feet in the right spots and scoot down. Scoot down. Anyway, to make a long story short, <laughs> this is a comedy. Don speeds home on her bike, but the cops are on her tail. Oh, false alarm. Then, Don notices what appears to be Toby's car driving off. This inspires her to check out the spot once more. Upon arrival, she finds that the police are currently there, scooping his body out of the water. Convenient timing. Immediately after, Don rushes home and finds her mother collapsed on the floor. Don calls for help, then we cut to the hospital. What the shit? She wakes up, and her dad tells her to get some rest at home. She obliges, but home is kind of a hellscape at the moment. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that. Instead, Don pays a visit to Ryan, who's currently doing some very important research. Mom? Nope, it's the girl of your dreams, and soon-to-be nightmares. Don heads in and spills the beans. I've killed someone. Maybe even two people. Oh, and I have... Gina Dentata! Uh, yeah, okay, just go ahead and cry on my comforting shoulder. There you go. A little later, Don takes a bath. Emil has to cook after all. While waiting for that to take its effect, Ryan prepares a romantic setting in his bedroom. Soon after, Don exits the bathroom. Whoa, where are my clothes? I feel a little dizzy. Meanwhile, Don's doctor can be seen in the operating room getting his fingers reattached. So, you sure you don't want to tell us how this happened? Just give me the damn laughing gas already. Don walks away like a badass while Ryan calls for his mommy. Ah! Then, we cut to the hospital where Don checks up on her mother. She's sleeping, and so are all her internal organs. Meanwhile at home, Daddy Bill chastises Brad for basically killing his wife. Hey, why'd you go and do that, son? Tensions escalate before Brad sets his dog loose on Bill. What the heck? Fortunately, Brad calls the dog off, then Bill and Melanie head to the hospital. Don lovingly embraces her father before Melanie speaks up. I'm so, so sorry. Brad said not to worry about your mom. He said she passes out and falls all the time. Not the best excuse, but I'll take it. Just kidding, rage overcomes Don and she heads back home to face the final boss. She equips her highest level gear before entering Brad's dungeon. We get this uh, random flashback from the past, I don't know why, and then uh, Don feeds the dog a really healthy snack. Don's journey ends with her biking out of town before hitching a ride. I'm sure the driver is a very nice, uh, oh, he's old. 